what is up people the daily grind is back and i'm doing more videos daily with the daily frequency and today we've got our favorite ranveer alahabadia india's smartest podcast telling us why scientists love hinduism featuring abhijit chavda now let's listen to it obviously but before we listen to it here are my opinions of both of them ranveer uh from everything he's done so far we all seen how he can easily be gullible so i see him as the gullible blind believer and abhijit i see as a more rational person although his views tend to favor hinduism and the right wing greatly but in what he says factually and scientifically they are uh, more rational although historically when he uh, gives out opinions he tends to conclude things that favor a certain narrative a certain right wing hindu nationalist narrative this is well known but i just said that uh, in case you don't know who this guy is but let's watch but so what are those 11 dimensions like could you hand over us to it so uh, when scientists were trying to figure out what gravity is they realized that quantum mechanics is not able to describe gravity because uh, general rel- wait are you talking about when scientists try to describe gravity in the 20th century use from what we after learning about quantum mechanics because when we first learned about gravity we didn't know anything about quantum mechanics because that was newton that was uh, in the 1600s so uh, i'm sorry quantum physics doesn't work in the curved space time of general relativity so okay. they dis- they thought of how about the most fundamental entity or particle in the universe is just a one dimensional vibrating string and maybe the entire universe the atoms protons quarks all the fundamental <laughs> particles everything all the interactions c- emerge out of these one dimensional vibrating spring strings. okay okay he is giving us the basics of string theory see whenever abhiji chavda speaks science he is rational he speaks facts only I've never seen him uh, being inconsistent with uh, the general scientific understanding that we have but again like I said uh, historically he seems to conclude uh, in a very nationalist hindu national sort of way continuing so they tried to construct a universe out of that idea now they found that in order to make this idea work the mathematics it it, it did not work in a three dimensional or four dimensional mathematics they needed to have 10 or 11 dimensions to make this theory uh, mathematically consistent otherwise if see all this is perfectly correct that's how that's uh, something that's part of string theory we need 11 dimensions for the math uh, for the math in string theory to work out properly it would fail mm. so it is all in order to fit this idea of vibrating strings as the foundation of the universe that they had to construct the theory in 10 or 11 dimensions Maybe. see all this is fine now where does hinduism come in the string is the connection between the soul and the god oh my god ranveer just shut up and don't say anything let the guy who knows this stuff speak anything is possible we don't know at this stage mm. we don't know at this stage but what you have described to me all these different dimensions and the the single consciousness that we are part of this essentially is vedanta what you're talking about the, the philosophy of vedanta talks about the fact that if there is light in space it doesn't shine unless there is an object it can shine off off mm. so the- wait wait why does the physics connect with the hinduism you haven't mentioned that you just jump directly to i don't know vedanta whatever okay what this is some philosophical ideas light ha- the has to be an object for light to shine off of the object is so that light is consciousness and the object it shines off of is your soul so that is the kind of philosophy you have in vedanta i'm not saying it's science it's philosophy, philosophy. there's a distinction because philosophy talks about non physical concepts and phenomena and objects cool. which science cannot address okay but and this is the reason why theoretical physicists especially people like bohr einstein bohr Schrodinger, Heisenberg, all these pioneers of quantum physics, they invariably found themselves drawn towards Indian philosophy and Vedanta, mm. because these concepts, if you think deep about them, deeply about them, they seem to be striking parallels. 
So that these ancient Indians from thousands of years ago have contemplated the things which quantum me quantum mechanics is now making us think about. Mm. They have already thought about these things and they have cre created a philosophy out of it. By oh my God, that's so sad. They haven't thought about any of these. See, the way we came to those theories, scientific community came to those theories is as a conclusion from evidence. The way Vedanta arrived at whatever philosophy is just you know, sitting and thinking and thinking of ideas and philosophies and just writing them down. It's not from evidence in any way. These scientists, yes, they were inspired, I could say. Uh, they did read a lot of Indian philosophy. They, they did have a lot of Vedanta. I know a lot of Germans did. Schrodinger has spoken about it, Heisenberg. A couple of German physicists of this time did speak about it. But it's a huge leap to conclude that quantum physics or the people who came up with quantum physics, the Vedas were the inspiration for that. Absolutely not. If you think that, then you haven't backed up your claim with enough sufficient evidence. By exploring the inner universe via meditation, mm -hmm. physics and science is about exploring the external universe. Why are, whereas spirituality and philosophy and meditation is about exploring the inner universe. Mm. And it seems... Oh my God. When you give names like inner universe, you're making it seem like, you know, there's this entire world within you that has to be explored. See, words have meanings. So when you use certain words that have certain meanings in other contexts, use them in another context like universe means only one thing the external universe that's the only thing the universe can mean but when you call it an internal universe and spirituality describes that now we are uh, using equivocation yeah i should get my file secret and yeah he's using the word universe in two meanings i'd call that an equivocation it, it appears that we can find answers to the external universe by looking within as, as well so there seems what? to be some sort of connection yeah. between the two. Seems to be. See, that seems to be is doing a lot of heavy lifting in whatever he's saying. That is the thing about why theoretical physicists are invariably drawn towards, once they reach a certain level of maturity and intelligence, they are drawn towards Vedanta. Right. Good. Now pat yourself on the back for being the descendants of the people who came up with Vedanta. Because, you know, invariably you're connected to that, right? Oh. Repeat thought that I have thought a lot about lately, which is that the concept of thoughts is that they're not our own. For example, don't tell me your name, sir. But close your mouth and don't say anything. Just think of your name. Okay, dude, uh, Ranveer, please stop eating so many shrooms. You heard a voice in your head say Abhijit? Now where did that voice come from? So. There is some source of something that's even giving us out. Oh my God, Ranveer, you are assuming things. You are assuming the voice in your head has to be an external voice that's being projected into your head. There's absolutely no reason to think that. Which means that anything you can think of, I think of a red tornado. Maybe on the surface of Venus, that red tornado is actually happening. So anything that you think of is actually there somewhere. I have heard this before somewhere, that mm. anything you can imagine does exist somewhere on this universe. Mm. There is a place somewhere in this enormity, in the enormity of the universe, that any thought, anything you can think of in your mind, mm. no matter how abstract or ridiculous it is, it may actually exist somewhere. Because imagine you're thinking of a very crazy... What shit are they saying? Man, if, if you wanted an example of a completely pointless conversation in a podcast, that is this. A drawn robot. There's a kid in South Korea who's currently drawing that robot. But because you and that kid are connected to the same consciousness, you're thinking of that thought, you're thinking of that thought through his eyes or her eyes. And that's the nature of thoughts, which is why, um, you know, all these crazy thoughts we have or the crazy thoughts that scientists have are probably just gifts given to them by that consciousness that, okay, you've worked hard enough here. Why don't you take this thought in your dream? And then once you wake up, show the world the truth using formulae and science. It does feel like a gift once you see that clarity, that, that moment of clarity when you know the answer. Mm. It oh man. Yeah, but you just keep encouraging Ranveer to uh, say his uh, 
philosophies. If he feels really good, then his fans, his subscribers are going to come over to your channel. It does feel like a gift from the heavens. Wow. It's like a flash of light just opened up to you. <laughs> Hilarious to hear these guys say it. Anyway, this video is done pretty much. I will end the video here. Hope you guys like this. I will see you in tomorrow's video.